Blog Talk Radio. College football fans across the land, this is the big one. This is the one we've been waiting for. Welcome to another edition of Quick Slants, the show where we talk nothing but college football. Man, it's the biggest week in college football right now, and I'm one of your hosts. I'm glad to be here with you for this one. I'm Devin McMillan, but I'm here with the star of the show. We got Fred Perdue in the building. Fred, what's going on, man? It's time. What's going on? What's going on, man? It's, it's, it is time for what well, we. This is a rivalry game. This is a the, probably the biggest game, and quite honestly, college football fans are happy, but I don't know. I don't think it's enough people are hype about this. We got a lot to talk about. People need to get hype, man, because you know this game. Well, every time these two teams play, there's implications. Now, this would be the fourth year in a row that these teams faced off. All four matchups um, have had national championship implications. The first two, as we know, were actual national championship games. The first won by Alabama in 2016. Uh, Then the rematch was won by uh, Clemson in 2017. That was a 35-31 victory. Um, Surprising to a lot of people. Last season, they did battle in the Sugar Bowl in the semis for a trip to the national championship game. Uh, Alabama won that by a score of 24 to six. I think last year, a lot of people were kind of touting that as the rubber match, probably because they couldn't see into the future. The fact that these two teams were going to actually meet again in 2019 for the actual national championship. So in, in, in all honesty, this is actually the rubber match. You know what I'm saying? This is, this is, <laughs> Winner-take-all affair, the tiebreaker in national championship games can be broken. Uh, This game will come to you on Monday evening, January 7th, Levi Stadium in Santa Clara, California. Uh, 8 p.m. Eastern time is when everything is slated to get underway. Fred, I know you're excited, man. You've built up a whole season for this particular moment, and I, I just can't express you know, like the feeling around, you know, actually moderating this show with you and watching you go from recruiting season, spring games, uh, the start of the season, the Heisman race, the playoffs, until this pinnacle, this very moment. I'm sure you're like a kid in a candy factory, man. <laughs> I am. I, I really am. And it, to me, when I look at these two programs, I see – Excellent. I, I mean, they are the pinnacle of what college football is. I mean, you have Nick Saban, who's, I mean, at this point, can we just call him the GOAT? I mean, he is. He's the yeah, GOAT among you got to. I mean, you could, got to. So when, when you think of the Jimmy Johnson, the Era Parsegan, uh, the Bear Bryant, I mean, those guys are great. <laughs> Barry Switzer. But when you think of what this guy has done, you know, year in and year out for the last decade, he's dominated college football. And it's like, okay, every single time somebody throws something at him, you say, okay, uh, we'll go the spread offense. This is how you beat him. Okay, we'll, we'll evolve our linemen. We'll evolve our defenses. Okay, we'll, get, we'll go get Johnny Manziel. Okay, we'll figure out how to beat Johnny Manziel. You throw Kyler Murray at him, I'll figure out how to stop, stop Kyler Murray. Okay, you, okay, the defense is great. Well, guess what? We'll throw good defenses at him. Okay, well, he'll just go get to a ton of lower. So it's like, what do you do to stop him? And then we finally see somebody not only stop him in a regular – it's one thing to beat him in the regular season, but it's another thing to, to do it when all the chips are on the table. Deshaun Watson and Clemson did that, and they almost did it twice. You know, and on the other side, I look at Clemson and I look at Dabo Sweeney, and I remember, you know, when he took over for uh, t- for Terry Bowden, and I just remember, or Tommy Bowden, I just remember, man, this this doesn't seem right. It's not. I mean, it's a guy named Dabo. Who is this guy? And he, you know, <laughs> going back, he's like, this is Cle- they were Clemsoning. You know, they would choke in every big game situation. But it seems like he's built an SEC like team. And many teams outside of the com, outside of the SEC, you see Urban Meyer do it, and he can do it every few years, and but he doesn't have the the continual speed on defense 
or at other skill positions. This guy has assembled a team where you have not one, not two, not three, but four ridiculously good defensive linemen. And unfortunately, one won't play because you have because of a a drug test. And I hate to see Demarcus Lawrence not play. That 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 hurts because he's my favorite player on that defense. But right. you know, it's not just the defensive line. You have Kendall Joseph at linebacker safety. You also have Travion Muller at corner, who might be one of the best corners in the country. Uh, that doesn't really have a big name. Uh, you know, you have big name players, and not, not, the thing about their defense is. They're fast, and they're not only fast, but they're physical. Uh, and they have depth. Uh, but then you say Deshaun Watson, he's gone. Uh-oh, Clemson's going to have to rebuild, not reload, and step in. Steps in Kelly Bryant a couple years ago. He's not really the guy you're looking for. And you transition from him to a freshman. Usually a freshman doesn't do what Trevor Lawrence has been doing. And we're talking right. Trevor Lawrence might be an NFL caliber elite type quarterback and he's only a freshman so and forget all and when we think okay when you think maybe a quarterback has to beat beat Nick Saban enter Travis Etienne um Amari Rogers T Higgins it seems like there's uh, and of, of course you cannot forget Hunter Renfro he's been there since the beginning this is his fifth year on it seems like you remember how we used to talk about J.T. Barrett it seems like it seemed like J.T. Barrett at Ohio State was in college for 15 years. You know, I feel like Hunter Renfro's been been in college for like a decade now because it just seems like he's always there. He's Mister Consistent, and you know, these two teams are everything. And yet, people are complaining that you know there's no there's no parity in college football. If you want parity, these are the two teams you have to beat. If you want to be the best, you got to beat the best. And right. my only gripe about this game is why do you put it in San Jose, California? There's no, there's no sense of college football out there. There, that's a pro town. That's a, you know, leave it with the BCS ball. Put it in the Rose Bowl. Why are we playing in San Francisco 49ers stadium? Come on. Right. All right. But look, you, you brought up um, Trevor Lawrence. Um, so before we get to the keys to the game, let's talk about the the quarterback matchups in this game because, of course, in one corner, you have um, the proven veteran, even though he's you know he's only a sophomore. But you have Tua uh, Tungavailoa. I think that's the first time I ever said his name. I hope I said it right. Um, of course, he's just a sophomore, but he was the runner up for the Heisman Trophy. We saw what he uh-huh. did when he was inserted into the national championship game last season. Um, and in the other corner, you have Trevor Lawrence, a true freshman who who uh, uh, basically came in to replace Kelly Bryant in week five. He's only the third true freshman to start in a national title game since the BCS began back in 98, uh, I think it was. And, um, uh-huh. you know, after week five, since he's come in, he's only thrown for – 2,933 yards, 27 touchdowns, and four interceptions. Uh, the Tigers, since week five, has averaged over 45 points per game. He was a five-star recruit. Um, so a lot of people think he's been playing as well as advertised. Now, in the in the history of true freshmen playing in this particular game, they struggled a little bit. But – you know, I, I've been reading up a lot of things, and, and people think that it could be different for Trevor Lawrence. Do you think that the true freshman national championship game struggle will affect him, or do you think he's different? I think – I don't think the lights will be too bright for him because you have you have a team around him that can keep him not only grounded. Uh, I, I think – Throughout these weeks of practice, I think because Dalvo has been there before, and that's huge in itself that, you know, you typically in a situation like that, your coach hasn't been there before. Your team hasn't been there before. But a lot of these guys have been there already, have either won on the won a championship, been involved like a Hunter Renfro. He's been on this whole journey his whole career. That's all he knows, you know. So he knows how to keep this guy grounded you know, keep him in the right headspace. And 
you know, when you have a team, and that's the great thing about college football is, you know, when you have a team around a guy, you got you can keep a guy focused. You can tell him, hey, this is what you need to do. Don't don't overthink it. You know, just do what you do for a normal game. Just think of it like any other week against a tough opponent versus thinking thinking of it as a national championship game where you have to be a hero. Just do what you do. And that's what Trevor Lawrence and company is uh, going to have to do because this is probably the best team they've seen all year. All right, so the other side, of course, we spoke about the young veteran, the sophomore veteran in this situation, <laughs> uh, Tua. What are your thoughts on him entering this game? Man, um, last week in the playoff, in the semifinal against Oklahoma, I said, what's going to happen with his ankle? Because you just don't know after a surgery. You've had a month to prepare, but you just don't know. It's a uh, – but especially for a guy like him, he likes to move around in the pocket a lot. Um, he, he's more, he is the pocket passer. He's not really going to be the guy to take off. He's not Jalen Hurts. But he looks sharp. And I think with him, he, he out of, of the two, he, when you say veteran, it doesn't seem like it because he, he really didn't do a lot last year until about maybe a half of a game in the national championship, and he struggled for a half of a half. <laughs> so, you know, when I look at how he has evolved, not only as a passer, but his confidence, you know, the I see holes in his game. But for, you know, when I look at his game, I say can, he's, he likes to throw the deep ball. He has a, he has a ton of weapons, Irv Smith, uh, Jerry Judy, uh, Jalen Waddle, who went from, who's gone from a uh, – from a punt returner, kick returner to their number three or four receiver, you know, uh, Isaiah Ruggs and all these other guys, you know, you have tons and tons of receivers. And, yeah, that's fine and that's great, but what does Alabama love to do? Run the football. And that's what helps him so much because the run, it opens up the passing game like no other. And not many teams can truly run the football when they want to, and that's what makes him so dangerous. Um, his, For me, his weaknesses, not many, but it's more of a decision thing. It's, he wants the big play all the time. He doesn't He doesn't check the ball down when he needs to. He'll try. He likes to play a little bit of hero ball, and I can't blame him because he has the weapons, he has the arm, he has the talent. You know, he tries to be Superman and, Sometimes being Superman will kind of hurt you, but I think Nick Saban wants him to cut down on those turnovers uh, because when you did see him start to turn uh, turn the ball over, it was starting to happen at an alarming rate. And you saw in the uh, semifinal against Oklahoma, you could see he kind of reeled it in a little bit, just reeled it in just a little bit uh, because he does hold on to the ball a little bit longer than he needs to. Uh, but, again, it, it's not out of necessity. It's because he just – he knows he has the guys to make the plays. All right. So um, that's your, your quarterback matchup right there. That, that'll be interesting to see, man, because, you know, I'm interested in seeing if Trevor Lawrence can step into this game and be Tua from last season, even though, you know, mm-hmm. he won't be replacing anybody in the game. But we'll see, like you said, the, if the lights are, are too big for him or not. Um, Give me some keys to the game on both sides. Like, what does both teams have to get accomplished in order to win this game? Uh, From from the Clemson perspective, uh, they have to get pressure uh, because and and this kind of goes back to Demar to um, to to Dexter Lawrence because uh, he being out of this game, you're it's hard enough to beat Alabama full strength much less beat them with a guy, one of your best players, if not the best player on your defense, um, not playing in this game. So you're, it's going to be a little bit more on Cleveland Farrell, Christian Wilkins, uh, Austin Bryant. Those guys will have to step it up even more uh, to get pressure, and you have to get home with, not, with just your front four. You can't blitz this team because they'll just pick you apart. Um, you, For me, you, you have to – you have to make Tua move off of his spots. You have to stop the run even a little uh, with the amount of backs that Alabama has. It, it, I don't see how it's possible, but if you can slow it down, because Alabama is a machine on offense now, 
Uh, on the other side, for Alabama, really, just do what they do uh, off on defense. Thing is, you're not going to stop this Clemson team. Can you? This is this t- this team on defense is not last year's defense where they were just completely dominant. They have some young guys in the secondary. You know, I know a lot of the NFL folks that, are, that listen to this, they'll probably, re- especially the older heads, will remember uh, Patrick Sertain used to play for the Dolphins, where his son is a starting corner now for Alabama, and he got he got uh, he got picked on a little bit, and you could tell as a freshman he, he he was ready for the moment. A couple times he got pushed off on. Uh, a couple times by Lamb against Oklahoma, and one was at least a push off. It shouldn't have been a touchdown. But when I look at that defense, the secondary is the weakness. If Clemson tries to take advantage of that, how will those young corners uh, hold up? Quinnen Williams is an absolute monster. Uh, where they lack in depth up front as far as big-name players, they have Quinnen Williams, who needs almost a triple team at this point, um, and Laquan Davis also – Anthony Jennings, you, you look at all of these guys, these edge rushers that they have, they do it um, as, a, as a group more than just one guy. Um, Alabama, they're solid at the safety position. Deontay Thompson is a guy that most don't really know about because they had so much talent last year with Mika Fitzpatrick, uh, Levi Wallace, and Anthony Avery. You just didn't know about a lot of these guys. But uh, McKinney at safety, uh, as well as Deontay Thompson, those guys. One, McKinney's more of a hit you in the mouth kind of guy, and uh, Deontay Thompson, a, just a straight up ball hawk. You'll see those guys in uh, in the NFL draft this coming uh, this coming May. Uh, but when I look at how Alabama will get pressure, Quentin Williams is number one, and if they can get any kind of pressure up the middle, that's how you you rattle that young freshman, get in his face a little bit, rough him up a little bit. Make him make him feel you, if you know what I mean, from a, a defensive line standpoint. Even after the play, bump him a little bit, make him make him uncomfortable. And if you can stop the running game or even slow Travis Etienne down, I think that's going to be a huge thing. Uh, will that defensive line get tired? Because that was the key to winning for Clemson, winning a national championship a couple of years ago with Deshaun Watson. They ran 90 plays, and you just can't. It, and to put that in perspective, I know when we think of spread offenses and how teams run up tempo, in the NFL, most teams only run about maybe 60, maybe 70 plays max. So you're running 20 more plays than any other team, the uh, up-tempo NFL team uh, will run. So, and, that's, that's, and that's on college defensive linemen who, yeah, you, uh, they're first-round talents, but they don't have the conditioning of an NFL player they're still getting there. So if you have those guys on the defensive line at Alabama just sucking wind, hands on their hips by the fourth quarter, not wanting to tackle anybody, uh, that'll be something that I'll probably keep a, a huge eye out for, uh, especially heading into the latter part of this game. But I think it's going to be – this is going to be a – you're going to see a lot of jabs early um, on both sides. Uh, you won't see a ton of haymakers in the, in the set, until the second half. Both teams are second half teams, and they make once they make their adjustments to the adjustments, as as Coach Saban will say, that's when you'll see um, the real game within the game actually take place. All right, so give me some some X factors on on both teams. Um, like you you told us what each team needed to do to win the game, but actual players who will be X factors in, in the success of their team or the failure All right, I'll give you one. of their team. <laughs> All right, I'll give you one on defense and one on offense for both teams. Offensively, Irv Smith Jr., uh, he's a, uh, just a, a very athletic tight end. Um, I, if we remember back a couple of years ago, we remember O.J. Howard and how, you know, the criticism of Nick Saban on offense was that he never really used his tight end despite having one of the best tight ends in college football, and we saw that come out in the national title game. Well, Irv Smith has been doing it all year long, and, you know, he's, he's a matchup nightmare. That's the one thing you hear about tight ends all the time nowadays. They can't block, but guess what? They're big receivers who are really fast, and you can't put a safety on them. You can't put a linebacker on them. You definitely can't put a corner on them. So how do you beat them? Um, he's going to be huge in their passing game. Um, 
for me, I, I don't – do you put Kendall Joseph on him? Uh, probably too fast for him. Travion Mullins, you definitely can't put on him. You have, you're going to have him on, J, on Jerry Judy the whole night. So, for me, that's going to be the, the – he's going to be the X factor. And that, that was hard for me to pick because of how Josh Jacobs has played all year long. He's Kenyon Drake 2.0. But I just I, – I, I think Nick Saban understands that your tight end is your best friend. And he figured out that you have to use this guy. So, uh, on defense – for me, uh, it'll be uh, it'll, I, I'm gonna, I have to go back to Quinn and Williams. He most didn't know who he was for Alabama last year. That was because you had so many great players across the defensive line. Darren Payne was so good for them, uh, not only uh, getting to the quarterback and stopping the run, but also catching touchdowns. You know, a la uh, Warren Sapp. So, but Quinn and Williams is he's a nose guard, but he's not your typical. You know, nose guard. He's he's like six four. He's like two hundred and eighty, two hundred and ninety pounds. But he's got the a very quick first step. And when he he can split double teams so well. I against Oklahoma, he split a double team and a back chipping, and still got back to Kyler Murray. And he fell on top of him. Of course, you know uh, Oklahoma's offensive line didn't like that too much. But that's on them. That's not on him. So, but he's so disruptive, uh, and even if he doesn't get to the quarterback, his hands are up. He's always trying to disrupt a play. So, for me, uh, when you when you look at that as far as X factors on both sides, those two guys will be very huge impacts, and they'll help everyone around them um, make plays. For Clemson, um, Travis Etienne on, at the running back position, I've been touting him all year long. Uh, I said I said he'd be a very big Heisman uh, candidate. He probably should have been. We have got three quarterbacks. It is what it is. Going into next year, he'll probably be the guy along with Jonathan Taylor. So he this is his one. This is his springboard game into next year. And if he has a big game in, in, in this national championship, he's really going to um, you're going to have to have a big big game. Not only running the football, catching the football. Being in the, in the blocking game uh, and on the defensive side, Christian Wilkins, this is his moment. He's a senior. He's already won one. He knows what it takes. Um, he's the leader of this defensive line with Dexter Lawrence out. He's going to have to ratchet it up just a little bit more. And he's the, he's the like you say, wily old vet. He's that guy that, again, he's won a national championship. He knows what it takes. So he's going to have to be that guy to make uh, Tua's life really hectic. He's going to have to live in that backfield or help others live in that backfield by taking on double teams. All right. So the time has come, man. It's time, it's time to pick it up. Uh, how's the game going to go? How's it going to end? Who you got? Uh, this one, you know, I picked Alabama to, to win it all early in the season. And, you know, I don't go against Coach Saban too often. Uh, even when it just seems like the teams are so dead even. But what what I saw against Oklahoma, what I saw against Georgia, what I've seen all season long, there's a resolve in this team that every year he always says, you know, uh, yeah, we won a national championship last year, but that was last year. And guess what? You guys haven't done a thing. And he's, he's kept preaching that every single week. The secondaries come along very well especially from what I've seen early in the year where they were just young, not knowing where to be, what to do. Uh, I got to go with Alabama in this one. It's going to be close. Um, I think it'll be – I'll even put a score to this one. Uh, We'll say 35 – 35-31 Alabama. All right. Um I'm I'm gonna give a pick on this as well. I'm gonna go Alabama as well, but you know all I'm looking for, and I'm sure all you're looking for, is the greatest possible game that we can possibly exactly. witness on Monday night. You know, regardless of who wins, but you know Nick Saban, he's already entered himself. I don't know. He, he's already put himself probably in a class by himself. So winning another one, it, it's just gonna you know just further distance himself from the rest of the pack. 
This man has taken Bears program and turned it into a grizzly polar hybrid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some kind of monster bear, but um, but shout out to him. Uh, shout out to Dabo. We're hoping for a great game on Monday night. And of course, I mean, if you if you listen to this show, then you should know plenty about college football. But just in case you you don't, and you're just giving it a shot, once again, the, the 2019 national championship game will be played Monday, January 7th, uh, Levi Stadium in Santa Clara, California, Alabama versus Clemson. Uh, the game time is set for 8 p.m. You know, we know it's going to be a lot of talking heads prior to the game, so kickoff will probably be in the minutes uh, proceeding that. But 8 p.m. is when everything uh, basically gets kicked off on the network. So, um, Fred, man, I'm, I'm praying for a good one, man. Monday night. Let's get it. You got any parting shots for the folks before we, uh, Sign off and, and 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 eagerly await this game. Twenty nineteen, the twenty eighteen twenty nineteen season has been um, a roller coaster. It's anything. I mean, we've had everything from um, a team, a, a group of five schools, thinking that they were they were ready for what this is what this these two teams are about to do. To you know, you've had two teams that are meeting for the fourth time. I mean, this is this is getting to this is getting to a point where now fans are I, again. I said fans are upset that these two teams are playing, and I'm not. I, I love this. I, I love every second of this. I love seeing the best of the best because this is what you asked for. You asked for a playoff. You said we want the best four teams to turn into the best two teams, and if that means we see Alabama Clemson every year, find some way else to stop it. I mean, if you, if your team is that good, find a way to stop it. My team's not there yet, so I want to be. I just want to say that, you know, I, I get called an Alabama uh, apologist so much, but you know, I, I see what I what I see from these teams are is excellence, and I see from recruiting to de recruiting their players to, uh, you know, to everything about these two teams. They literally are going. These are the these are the Goliaths of college football and. Uh, I just can't wait to see it. I just because it's the game. It's going to be the game within the game. The, the head games, the adjustments to the adjustments. That's going to be the fun part to see how these two teams, you know, win the mental game as far as the coaching is concerned. Can't wait. What is there to be an Alabama apologist about? They're the best of the best. <laughs> like it's, yeah, people are crazy out there. All right, so one last thing: let everybody know how they can get in touch with you on Monday evening prior, during, and after this game? Uh, you guys can catch me on Twitter, uh, Fred Purdue CFB. I will be talking about this game. I might drop a couple of jewels, a couple stats throughout the uh, going into this game. I got a couple for you, so check me out on Twitter. Just kind of kind of rock with me for the next couple of days. I know I might throw a little NFL in there because I get to be a spectator this weekend, but uh, my, my focus for the, up until Monday, will, especially on Monday, will be – this game, and I, I'm like I said, I can't wait for it because, and this this is this is all we got. We got this is the last thing we get into, and then we get NFL draft season. So you know, and I'll be saying you'll see hear a lot more Alabama Clemson coming from that too. So um, this is this is one probably I hope this is one for the ages. All right, if you want to get that quick slants moderator extraordinaire, you can hit me on Twitter as well, Dev Mac W R Sports. Um, you can also hit me on the War Room Sports Twitter account as well. It's at War Room Sports. Uh, we'll be talking uh, national championship on the Group Me app and the War Room Sports Game Time group within the Group Me app. So uh, if you know, search for that if you're on Group Me, uh, the War Room Sports Facebook page as well. Um, if you want to catch archive episodes of Quick Slant, so you know what Fred was talking about. Leading up to this big moment all season, you can go to the War Room Sports YouTube page. You can also find that at warroomsports.com. But the big game is here. It's almost time, a few days before kickoff. Uh, We're going to sign off. This has been another edition of Quick Slants. And for the star of the show, Fred Perdue, I'm Devin McMillan. Don't accept mediocrity. Be steadfast in a war against ignorance. We'll see you chumps on Monday night, and we'll see you chumps on top. Peace. 
War Room Sports, www.warroomsports.com. What? Ain't no more to it.